Member for Burns Beach. Thank you. I, I rise to uh, talk on the bail amendment um, to the persons uh, linked to terrorism bill in 2018. Um, in the past, I've had to search my memories if I had any actual uh, involvement in relation to investigations into this, uh, into terrorism, etc. Uh, here in Western Australia, I have not in the last 30 years. But when I deployed to East Timor, I can tell you two circumstances where um, I've had uh, exposure to this space. The first person I'll speak of is uh, Senior Constable Tim Britton, now Sergeant Tim Britton, won the George Cross at the Bali bombings. Um, Tim replaced me uh, in the next contingent when I deployed to East Timor. Uh, he was on recreational leave up in uh, Bali when the bombs went off. Yeah, Cross of Valour, yes. George Cross, Cross of Valour, same thing. Um, um, anyway, Tim, lovely fellow, very shy, modest, etc. He won the, uh, his, uh, his uh, um, citation for um, actually going into the, uh, 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 the bombing sites and uh, it was dragging people out and he saved, uh, his heroism saved at least half a dozen people that we know of, possibly, probably more. The second uh, count that's... Um, uh, in relation to terrorism was up in East Timor again. Uh, we were deployed up to the eastern end of the island, uh, myself and uh, Sergeant Toop, who's uh, still a serving officer up in the wheat belt. And Toopy and myself were tasked, we'd heard chatter around that uh, a couple of the local dissident groups were a little annoyed with the local Filipino um, police officers. So um, anyway, we thought it was just a little bit of aggression, but uh, Toopy, in his wisdom, stumbled across a truck with four tonne of amphibo headed to the Bacow police station with his intention of blowing it up. Now, amphibo is uh, um, an explosive made up of fertiliser and diesel. OK, so when it goes bang, it goes... <laughs> you learn something every day. So it's uh, a very simple explosive, um, but um, when it goes off, it, uh, it goes off in a big way. And four tonne of it, would, I would suggest, would leave a very big... Oh, and it was headed to the Bacow police station. Um, I won't go into the details as to what the motivation between the particular group was, because I think it would have upset uh, the member for Maitlands. It was a, over a gambling dispute that involved chickens, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but anyway, um, some of my research leading up to, uh, into this thing, I thought would, it might be useful to actually define um, what terrorism is. And I uh, stumbled across um, this definition that came out of one of the uh, um, international law journals, and it said that um, terrorism was defined as the unlawful use of force or violence against persons or property to intimidate, coerce a government, the civilian population, or any segment uh, of their forens for, uh, for a political or social objective. Now let's think about that. Force, violence against persons or property. Pretty simple. The definition that relates to here in Australia is actually found in the Commonwealth Criminal Code. There's no definition of uh, terrorism actually in our state criminal code. It's none. But it's found in the, in the Commonwealth Criminal Code of 1995, set out in section 100, and it defines it as an action or a threat of action made with the intention of advancing a political, religious, or ideological cause. That's simple but concise, an action or a threat of an action. So it doesn't actually necessarily need to be put in place. So here in Western Australia, the first response to um, to a terrorism act is actually is our state police. They have ownership of it, and that's set out under f uh, a few different pieces of legislation. One of them is the State Emergency Management Act, and it says that police are the lead agency when it comes to terrorism. And they often, because they're the first responders, they'll determine the response. Now, casting our minds back into that uh, particular uh, definition as set out in the Commonwealth Criminal Code, it's the state police that makes the determination as to what, where, when and how. 
it's our state police. Take, for example, um, the silliness that's going on in relation to the vegan um, uh, individuals. Now, under, the, under the, the definition, it could be argued that their conduct could be seen as an act of terrorism. But because the states are involved in that space, they'll make that determination first off. And I think clearly the common sense approach to that place is clearly it's not. And that comes about because the state have actually carriage of the investigation, All right, which is important because it'll be the states that make the determination whether the, value, whether the incident escalates to a proper terrorism incident. Now, there are types of terrorism, and the member for Armadale gave us some, a very good uh, historical um, uh, line in relation to um, some of the recent events. But in relation to it, there are five, as seen as five types of terrorism. Okay? The first one is state-sponsored terrorism. These are terrorist acts that a state or government condu is conducted by another sovereign state upon one another. Now, there's an argument going out there that a sovereign nation is responsible for attack on our IT currently. Is that an act of terrorism? It's a good question to ask. Probably at the moment they're only interrogating databases, but imagine if that foreign state started interfering with our electricity grid. Could that be seen as an act of terrorism? What about interfering with, say, Fiona Stanley and the medical records? Could that be seen as an act of terrorism by a foreign state? Probably is fitting underneath the, um, the definitions as set out that I've read previously. Dissident terrorism is the second one. These are terrorist groups that have uh, rebelled against their government. You know, in recent times, um, the IRA is probably the best example, but we've had that here in uh, Australia. The, uh, the uh, Hilton uh, bombings over in Melbourne, that is seen as, a, as probably as a dissident terrorist attack that's occurred here in Australia. The third type is terrorists that are based on the left and right groups which are rooted with political ideological in ideology. Now, do we have that here? Probably it's not particularly strong, but it is worth noting and it is worth watching in that space. Uh, in December, I travelled with one of our committees over to the uh, UK and received briefings from uh, the MI5, um, uh, and uh, a couple of other policing groups over there. And in recent times, in the European experience, and specifically around the UK, they have seen the rise of um, terrorist acts from the right rather than from the left. And uh, their um, national front was one of the um, drivers in that space. And they were singling out individuals uh, and um, assaulting them en masse. Um, was one of their te techniques they were using to intimidate particular cold um, groups within their community. Um, the fourth one, which does take, uh, we have seen here uh, in Australia, is religious terrorism. All right, and it's easy to step up. We have the ISIS space, and Man Nonis is one of the best uh, examples in that space. Um, I met with the coroner as part of our committee de deliberations with that. And uh, having read his report, and uh, I took the time to actually go down and sit inside the um, Lint Cafe and actually um, contemplate his findings in, um, actually in the place where the crimes were committed. We have that, but we also have in that same space, um, and there was some mention of um, uh, the shooting in relation to the abortion clinics, etc., and some of the intimidation in that space. Uh, I know as a local police, uh, when a local police officer, they were getting quite, um, it was not uncommon for them to receive bomb threats. Now, is that a class, you know, an act or a threat of an action? Could that be seen as a, um, a terrorist incident? It fits within the definition, but that we do see them. And finally, the last class of uh, terrorism is criminal terrorism. Now, this is where terrorist acts are used to aid a crime or a, uh, or a criminal profit. 
Now, it could be argued that uh, the, uh, one of the uh, recent um, vehicle-borne attacks over in Victoria could be seen as a criminal terrorist. It was just uh, his behaviours, he'd gone off the rails, etc. But the one that stands out in my mind is the recent uh, nails in the fruit, pins in the fruit. Now, the, um, when that was investigated into, it was finally determined that it was a disgruntled employee. But picture that across an organised campaign across Australia. Now, we saw a lot of copycats in that space. But what happens if it was, say, for example, a coordinated through using our um, internet? Well, that's a very effective method to uh, influence a community. Now, bearing in mind, it fits within the definition as set out in the Commonwealth Crim Code. Very simple, very effective. And this is the way that we're seeing the trends in relation to um, terrorism going. They're going to the lowest and simplest form of effective delivery. The English are very, at the moment, uh, concerned about drones, as are we in that space. A young kid flying a drone into a plane could be just as effective as uh, driving a truck down the centre of the, uh, a crowded uh, mall. Same thing. Since 2014, the national threat level in Australia is seen as probable. Now, a couple of speakers pre prior to this have spoken about it, but there are actually five levels of threat in relation to the terrorism space. Not expected. Uh, I think the only time I can recall that was the case is when I was first as a young probationary constable in the past. Possible? Yeah, well, we thought we were in that space and the Bali bombings occurred. OK, there was no chatter in that space prior. We currently sit in the probable threat level. That's to say that we're probably going to have a terrorist attack. Now, I've worked in times where we worked and it was an expected terrorist attack. And one of the biggest fears we had locally, when, particularly when I was a supervising uh, officer in that space, where we were always worried that one of our police officers would be cornered and attacked and filmed because the impact that would have had on our community would have been such significance for cultural changes towards some of our um, more vulnerable uh, um, populations within our community, I don't think would have been acceptable. But it was clearly out there. We expected someone was going to grab one of our constables and was going to attack them and they were going to film it. I went close to it. I went close to achieving that in Victoria. Um, they, in Sydney, they attacked uh, the police employee, but our concern was they were actually going to get a uniformed officer and basically hack him to death on film. It was out there. We were really concerned as to how we dealt with it. And it was part of our briefings we used to do in the morning. Now, it's interesting. That was at the expected level. I haven't worked in an operational environment where it's been certain, but I know that our English colleagues work on that on a daily basis. Their threat levels move between expected and certain. All right, so that's, it's interesting. We do some things well in Australia. We do some things very well. Since 2014, we've had 14 major counter-terrorism 